0 modification of the FreeBSD code. Basically, you just copy the files over, you compile them, and run it. So, that's been done, and most of my time has been spent trying to get wireless drivers to work. Now, wireless drivers are considerably more complex than regular wired Ethernet drivers, meaning they require a lot more kernel functionality to be compiled into the driver. It's a lot bigger project than I originally thought it was going to be. It turns out that where I currently am compiling the Intel wireless driver, which is the one I'm using to start with, I have a driver size about equivalent to the size of Uniod. It's getting huge. And it's still not done yet. So it's mostly done getting the driver built to compile. And once that's done, I actually have to make it work. And then after that's done, I need to write a DIMM module so it interfaces with WLAN, XWLAN. There still is quite a bit of work left before anyone's going to see wireless drivers coming out of this project. It is moving along, and a lot of time's been spent on it, and we are, I am making a lot of progress, but there still is a lot more work to do. Although once it is done, I don't expect it to be difficult to produce multiple drivers for different chipsets, just like it is easy to produce drivers for wired chipsets right now. When do you expect? When do I expect? Um, that's hard to say. A lot of things keep interrupting me, and you'll see later on some of the other things I'm working on. Um, I was hoping to have at least a driver that would load and run by the, this warp stock, but it didn't happen. A lot of things get in the way. Um, Plus, it's really tedious working on this, and I get bored easy, so I tend to want to work on other things. But um, it's really hard to say. Okay. We're talking um, multiple weeks, months, less than 10 months time frame, I'd, if I'd have to guess. I, but that's just a wild-ass guess. Okay. Um, as I have been porting some of the wired drivers, I've, had, I've run into some other issues, like there's a particular interrupt structure that is not compatible with OS2 that I have to deal with on only a few of the wired drivers. So that's something else that's been taking up some of my time. Yeah, any, any wireless driver, any. Uh, including older ones. Any ones that exist in the FreeBSD system should be able to be compiled and run. Just like with the wired drivers. Any ones that exist in FreeBSD on request, I can compile them and make them. And I have been doing that. So this should have much better support than like Jenny. It should have much better support, yes. And of course, anytime new Multimac drivers are released, they, come, they go on the subscription service. Anybody kind of get the idea I'm plugging our subscription service? <laughs> so as a diversion, oh, USB has been taking up some of my time as well. Right now we have a pretty stable and re reliable stack in version 11.14. And what I have been working on, and I was so hoping I would have something working by today, but it just stuff happens. I have been active. Oh, there's one line item before what I was just going to talk about. The last version has one minor, minor, really simple fix in it. That's for booting from USB devices. And that's really the only difference between 11.14 and 11.13. Other than that, there's no difference. But I was hoping to have this working by, this, by today, and I didn't get it done. But I am actively working on a USB 3 driver for our USB stack. And that is coming along. And that will come probably before the Multimac wireless drivers. Forgetting the use button. Well, anyway, there's a. I have a scanner, and uh, that I'm forgetting the stupid scan program. That OS2 scanner. Program. Yeah. Tame. Tame and yeah, whatever. Anyway, so when I replaced, of course, it wouldn't work anymore. But if I did replace the two together files, <coughs> I'm going to forget what they are, as recommended in the README, then that did start working. And there's nothing else I have that doesn't work, even though the replacement files are a lot bigger than the original one. So I'm not complaining. I just don't know. Uh, yeah. What can I say? What can I say? <laughs> exactly. 
Anyway, so that's I've been uh, actively working on the USB 3 driver, so we should be seeing that fairly soon. It's coming along. I'm see. Well, I'm sorry. It's a generic. It's a generic standard. I'm writing to the standard to the spec. Should work anywhere. Mm -hmm. Does this mean that we can quote uh, OS2 from a USB driver uh, drive eventually? Which there's no reason why not to. If I'm I don't. That correctly. I don't see why you why can do that now, can't you? Yeah. Oh, I haven't tried it. Yeah, but not USB through. No, no, no. Oh, this this is just going to be a, a, a host controller driver. It pl will plug yeah. right in just like anything else, so everything else should be pretty much transparent. Okay. All right. And of course, <laughs> they will be available in the hey, subscription. Are you getting a kickback or something? <laughs> hey. <laughs> I see the name, yeah. Other drivers that are taking up time in, in kind of out there, not a whole lot of time, but there's display drivers. Um, Panorama is out there. It's pretty much reliable and stable at version 1.07. There are some minor issues. Um, the screen object installation has some issues. And a lot of these things come up as we're starting to develop and get Blue Lion ready to go. So some of these issues are coming up because of that. But anyway. There is Panorama, and of course there's Snap, which I'm not going to talk about because someone else is going to be talking about that in a different presentation, but that is there, and it is one of the drivers, but that is a work in progress, so that's around. I bought the last one supposedly supported by Snap, and it is almost... Yeah, well, that's coming, that's coming <laughs> along. That's there's disk drivers. Um, OS2 AHCI is there. It has some issues. It works for regular normal disks, however it has problems with optical disks. I don't know if some of you have seen that. There are real issues there. Um, I have spent some time investigating it. It still, needs, it still needs some work. And also, this particular driver is pretty slow booting up in some cases. And that's just a characteristic of the way it was designed. I don't know if there's anything I can do about that, but it kind of stuck with the way it was written originally, unless I want to rewrite it. But there are other things to work on, right? Like wireless drivers and... Have you got a twin brother or something? I don't have a wish. I, no, I don't have a twin brother, no. There is the, the uh, S506 driver. Um, nothing's been done on that. It's pretty reliable and stable. But, you know, that's on my list that I kind of watch and look at. There's other drivers like Amouse. That has taken up some of my time. Um, there are some install issues with the uh, mouse class object that I'm looking at fixing. Sometimes that doesn't work properly, and you don't get the right mouse object in your <coughs> system setup folder. Um, there's or you also, lose the mouse object. You or you lose it completely or whatever. There are issues there, and I do know what they are. I just need to address it. And that, but all this stuff takes time. You know, and as you can see, there's quite a list of things taking up my time. So, what's that? Time generator. I yeah, that you know, time right? JFS is stable and reliable as of version 1.9.06. Um, nobody should be using any version earlier than this because there is a serious defect in it, which will corrupt your data. It is fixed in this one. The really only known remaining problems are some check disk issues really rare things that do need to be addressed but have not been yet. So that's something else we do need to look at. How does it show up? The check disk issues? Yeah. It shows up like a, an error 148, can't read metadata. It's, that, it's the metadata read problem. It ends up when the, uh, the logs information in the, in the disk has been corrupted and you know, it should be able to handle it. It just ends up giving up and throwing a message. And the error message isn't clear because it's, it's not it's clear. Truncated. It says error reading M from C or right. Or <laughs> and the M is metadata, but yes, it doesn't, it say, doesn't metadata. say metadata. Yes, that's that's the issue we're talking about, and that's a known issue. And it doesn't show up very often at all. It's very rare. So, anyway, that's it's known and it's on the list. 
Uniod, I know a lot of people are interested in Uniod, but Uniod has not gotten any attention at all recently because of all of the preceding. However, it still is on the list and it still needs to be worked on and it's still, these are the things that I want to do with it. I want to organize it so that it's like what I did with the ACPI project. ACPI project used to be pretty much the same where it was a lot of hand-coded work every time a new component architecture from Intel got released, dropping it in. Well, the same thing is true with the UniAud driver. Every time the Linux guys come up with a new ALSA, it's a lot of manual labor to reincorporate it. I would like to separate that out just like I did with the ACPI project so that you can drop in a new thing in 15 minutes and recompile it and you're up and running. Um, and then actually do that. Drop in the latest one, fix up any of the remaining OS2 specific issues, and then that's my plan for UniAud. Time. There are uh, miscellaneous other drivers as well, like um, the keyboard driver and you know various other things that some take time from some time to time. For some item. There are, you know, there's this, uh, there's this other miscellaneous little things out there that I didn't want to put everything in there. So anyway, that's our drivers that uh, I'm working on. So. I wanted to talk a little bit about reporting problems because everybody has problems from time to time. So how do you report problems, right? Go into forums and look around and ask questions? No, you go into forums and then whine and complain that you have a problem and no one's helping. No, what you should do, <laughs> what, you sh what you should do is open a ticket at mantis.arkanoa.com. Or you could just go to arkanoa.com and click on support and that you can get to it from there. If you go to forums, t developers just don't have time to read everything or go everything. I mean, if I spend all my time reading forums and answering questions, when am I going to have time to write code? It just, it just doesn't happen. The forums are useful, though, if they're known problems that other users can well, get that's to a, that's a, yeah. that's Well, that's true. Past that, once yeah. you're past that, it's time to open a yeah. ticket. And, and as far as a developer is concerned, your problem doesn't exist unless there's a ticket for it. If there's no ticket, no problem. I can't work on it. Also, tickets are how we track progress of fixing the problem. Because it's all there in one place, all the data is there, and we can track what was done, what worked, what didn't work, and until the thing finally gets resolved. Please keep it one system and one problem per ticket. Don't produce a laundry list of problems in one ticket or say multiple systems or whatever. Otherwise, we can't track it very well. Also try to avoid ticket creep or problem creep where you open a ticket for one problem, that problem gets fixed, and then you add another one on the end of that. Well, suddenly now the ticket does a description of the ticket doesn't match what's in the ticket anymore. I'll let you know something. As a developer, I, I only see a, a list of the, the summaries. And as I go through them trying to pick something to work on, yeah. that's all I see. When you open a ticket, please provide appropriate data when you open the ticket. Read the wiki. It tells you what you need to supply. Almost always a test log log file. If you get a trap, the trap screen is good unless it's a useless trap screen. And many of them are useless these days. Yeah. So I wanted to show you what they look like and what you can do about it. Here is a trap screen that you might get. This was just happens to be one I happen to have. And if you look right here, the CSEIP, see this number right here? Yeah. That's a 32-bit number. You see how the upper four digits are not zero? If that's a 32-bit number, this trap screen's useless without more information. Because that's a 32-foot flat address. And in order to figure out where it is in this module, I need to know where that module starts in memory. So you need to open up Thesis and get the base address of this module. You're better off getting a trap dump for me. Because if all you do is include this trap screen, I can't do anything with it. There's nothing I can do. Because this, this address right here right. is what tells me what trapped. 
And I can't find that from this information. There's not enough in it. If this was a 16-bit number, if these top four digits were zero, then everything's there I need. But it, in this case, and as we're getting more and more drivers, all the Multimec drivers are 32-bit drivers now. The USB 3 driver is going to be a 32-bit driver. Um, it just, it just more and more these days, it's, it's just not useful. So that's how you can tell. So best thing to do is give me a trap dump. If you can generate a trap dump, that's the best thing. And I can, that has everything I need in it. OK, moving on. So when you report a problem, you need to open a ticket. So I thought I would go over. Everybody says, open a ticket. Well, I thought I'd show you how. There's what you get when you go to the Arkanoa bug tracker. And you see, and you want to open a ticket. Of course, you can pick a category, just pretty much whatever you have. This reproducibility thing is kind of important. Please, if you can reproduce the problem, you probably should. If you can't, if it says have not tried, eh, pass. I might yeah. pass on look, even looking at this. Yeah, sure. You can say what kind of severity it is. That's fine, whether it crashes you or whatever. Um, I don't even know why we have this priority here. I ignore that. You can put whatever you want there. Most critical. Everything, Everything is critical. Every priority Everything's critical. I ignore script. that. Doesn't matter what you put there. I will ignore the priority. I don't care. It should be accessed by a separate judge. So anyway, this summary line right here, this is important because this is usually what I see when I'm trying to pick something to work on. So let's suppose you had like um, a video problem. Maybe your screen was shifted over a little bit or your mouse pointer looked funny or something. So you went and downloaded the latest panorama driver and installed it and it didn't work. Okay, so you want to put a summary in there. What, which, what should that look like? Panorama. Yeah. Panorama doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> How many people think that's a good summary? Well, it doesn't say what the problem is, does it? Unfortunately, a lot of people think that's a good summary. <laughs> What's wrong with this? It doesn't say what the problem is. What doesn't say what the problem is. Several things are. The, don't ever put the version number of what you're testing in the summary. Because what happens if tomorrow I release 1.08? Oh, fixed. Yeah. Fixed. Fixed. There you go. I don't look at this ticket anymore. Obviously, it's too old. OK? What hardware are you using? Usually it doesn't matter. I know there were other developers who made a big deal about what hardware you're running on. It really doesn't matter all that much. Only rarely does it matter that much. I mean, if you got a NIC driver for a Broadcom chipset, then of course I expect it to be a Broadcom chipset. But what motherboard do you have? I Not very useful. Isn't that only valid if you have two systems and one it crashes and the other it doesn't? Um, less so than you would think. Less so than you would think. So anyway, yeah, you're right. Everybody who noticed that this does not say what the problem is, please put an accurate, brief description of exactly what is happening. What's the problem? I don't care which version of Panorama it is. I don't care which version of ACPI it is. That you can put elsewhere in the ticket. Um, and if it's a Panorama problem, don't use the... Uh, the general pro uh, project, put it in the panorama. Right, it, yeah, of project. course, of course. So anyway. You know, this is really specific. I get called by, it doesn't work, and it did yesterday. <laughs> yeah, be specific. Yeah, please, because think, think about the developer. Think about what the developer is looking at. I'm looking at these summaries, and I, you know, I, I may be going to release a new version of whatever, maybe panorama. Let's stick with panorama. And I'm thinking, okay, let's go look at all the tickets and see if I can squeeze in some other fixes before I release this version. That's kind of how I work. And I'll go through the tickets and I'll look through the summaries. And this is what I see, these summaries. And I'll see, okay, I can, well, let's look at that one. Maybe I can squeeze that in. Oh, let's look at this one. Maybe I can squeeze this fix in before getting a new version out. And so make your descriptions clear and accurate for what, um, what's really happening. I think you're talking to the wife. <laughs> <laughs> In the steps to reproduce section, this is what steps the developer should take to reproduce the problem, not the steps you take to reproduce the problem. 
So try and make it, so tell me what I need to do to reproduce your problem so I can debug it. And then any additional in information you want to provide. Don't clutter the ticket with unnecessary screenshots that I have to sort through or bogus data about Windows or Linux or whatever. I don't care about that stuff. I only care about the problems. Let me reproduce it. This is a very, very nicely formatted ticket. I just thought I'd show you one that is very well done. It has a very clear summary. It says exactly what the problem is and easy to understand. It has a nice short description. It has what I need to do to reproduce the problem. It has some inf additional information. And notice down here at the bottom, there is, there is attached data. There is the test log, log file and some additional information. Nice, clear ticket, easy to understand. Good old Doug. Good old Doug. He's actually pretty good at writing tickets. So anyway, I thought I would show you one. So bottom line is, be respectful of the developers. There's very few of us, and the reason we do our coding is because we enjoy it. If we stop enjoying it, what do you think might happen? It's happened before. So kind of do as much as you can to isolate and resolve the problem so that you give the developer stuff to work on. Don't just say, hey, it doesn't work, and it worked yesterday. Try to make sure you've got a real problem. Read the documentation. Read the wiki. Are you using all the latest drivers? Is it reproducible? Is it reproducible by other people? Is it possible it's something else you did and not really related to what you think it is? And the last line, if you're the only one in the world having this problem, maybe it's not really the software. Replace user, yeah. When the developer asks questions, please provide the information that's asked for. Not what you think he wants, what he actually asked for. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> you might wonder why I'm mentioning all these things. It's probably because it's happened. It's happened. And you know, it's just to get the best. We want the best product. We want stuff to work. I want stuff to work. I'd like everything to work perfectly. I want to fix every problem there is. Unfortunately, I can't if I don't get the data. So anyway. Is there one other thing? Don't wait for years before you give the information back. Because often there's not, I've well, asked yeah. for information, and it doesn't come, and it doesn't come, and then. That's true. Don't, um, if don't I ask, abandon your tickets. Yeah, yeah, don't abandon your tickets. I know sometimes it takes a while for a developer to get to a ticket because there is so few of us and we have so much work to do. And, but, but once I decide I want to fix some things, like I'm, I've now switched my mode from multi-Mac to USB, for example. Okay, I'm working on USB. I need to get a new USB driver out. So <coughs> let's fix some USB problems. So I go through the tickets. Okay, work on this one, work on this one. I try reproducing this one. I, ha I have some questions. So I ask for some feedback. If I don't get feedback for two or three months, well, Actually, my time limit's four weeks. If you don't respond in four weeks, I will close the ticket. You've got a long time limit. I give them a long time. But if no response to something I ask in four weeks, the ticket gets closed. Anyway, I thought I would put something about choosing hardware because OS2 has always been a s operating system that's meant for reliable standard hardware. Yeah. It has never worked on every cheap piece of crap you can buy. That's never been the case. It's always required good hardware, and that still is true today. Choose when you go buy in a system. With all the work that we've been doing, it'll run on most modern hardware these days. 
But choose something that's quality, generic standards compliant hardware. Don't get the latest whiz-bang thing that's customized to the max. Get generic standard quality hardware. Don't buy the cheapest thing you can find. It's probably not quality. And stay away from NVIDIA stuff. <laughs> What's the problem there? The problem with NVIDIA is their cutting edge, cutting edge um, bizarre, bizarre configurations for performance reasons. Okay. They don't make standard compliant they stuff. The they, they go to the limit even if it violates the standards, yeah. which okay. means it has trouble with OS2. Yeah. Okay. Their video stuff is proprietary, and we, yeah, we can't problem. decode yeah. the yeah. stuff. Um, their interrupt structure is non-standard and doesn't work most of the time in the way we need it to work. So that's just one that I happen to know of that I can say. If you, if you have a motherboard you're looking at, it's got an NVIDIA chipset on it, and you want to run OS2 on it, uh, I would not recommend that. But you can use uh, laptops where Intel and NVIDIA is uh, at the same time. Well, there's no problem, right? You can. This is you can, and I'm primarily talking about the NVIDIA chipset, not the NVIDIA drive video drivers. See, there. NVIDIA. Yeah, well, that's the NVIDIA video probably, but yeah. it's probably got an Intel chipset in it. Yeah. And the chipset is the stuff that provides all the basic connectivity among the processor and the PCI bus and everything. Um, NVIDIA video will work, however, custom resolutions will not work on NVIDIA video. So you're stuck with whatever's in the BIOS with NVIDIA video. However, with A ATI video and mm -hmm. Intel video, yeah. custom resolution stuff works most of the time. So if you want custom big resolutions on those, you've, you're okay. With NVIDIA, you're stuck with whatever NVIDIA provides you. So I have to take my sticker off now. <laughs> yeah, you take your sticker off. If, and if you have a window sticker on there, you definitely take that off. <laughs> All right, so that's pretty much my presentation. I will entertain questions if anybody has any. I know I went pretty quickly through that. I was thinking it would take me longer than it did. Where's the tie? Where's what? The tie. I, that's an old picture. Well, not that old, but. Is a USB 3.0? Will it be possible to add 3.1 support? It will be possible. Not a big difference. But that's another step, no? Huh? No, not really. Huh. The, uh, the, the spec for the hardware is the big difference. Is the big difference. That's, that's the main thing. And the driver will support that. And then any ha enhancements we want to make, we can make at any time. Or do you mean with USB 3.1 the possibility to hook up a video screen to the USB port. Yeah. I know there's uh, much more possible with 3.1 than with 3.0. We will only support the data, data portion of that, at least initially. Okay. Have you already got a list of recommendations of hardware? Or you know, no, not right now. It would be nice to have something like that, but you know what? Hardware changes so quickly. As soon as we pr pr produce a list, no. you can't get that stuff anymore. Maybe the, the other way around then. Create a list of stuff which doesn't work. So well, that's, that, that was my thought. The list of stuff a that doesn't list. work. Yeah. A blacklist, which is why I put NVIDIA on the blacklist. Mm -hmm. yeah. And anything that is, looks weird, if, you, if it looks not just generic in its specs, in, in its advertising, yeah. I would stay away from it. Stick with generic yeah. quality stuff, and you should be fine. Yeah. If there's one laptop manufacturer you might want to stay away from, which makes relatively cheap stuff, it's Acer. That's yeah. true. And, and I've, worked, I've worked with some a -C -E -R, of those. A-C-E-R, Acer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I've worked with some of the laptops, oh, and God. with ACPI you get the most bizarre yeah. thing. It's, um, yeah, that's pretty low-end stuff, and it's... But, uh, it's, they cut corners like crazy. So far, you have to stay away from the uh, Lenovo ThinkPads as well, as long well, as they are not for. So it started when the for the 60 lines, so 460, 560, when the um, native or legal BIOS support is disabled, 
and there's no USB 2.0 support anymore. So this will be solved. But uh, you cannot yeah. Originally, buy new Lenovo laptops now because of the UEFI problem. So the yeah. series is the 50 one. Originally, so, originally, we would have said Lenovo laptops, IBM laptops, those are things to go with. But yeah. not so much anymore. They've the changed. Is working, but 460 doesn't work anymore. Yeah, true. Even UFI, EFI systems work fine as long as they have the compatibility module in it, the CSM module. I have several systems that are UEFI, and they all work OK. It has to have the compatibility module in it. I don't know. I don't know. There might be. But that would be another thing to check for. It has to have the compatibility module in it, the CSM. Otherwise, OS2 won't even boot on it. Any other questions?